Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Online Church for the Drakesville United Methodist Church. I am Pastor John Klaus welcoming you again this morning from wherever you are watching. We are glad to have you. And I wanted to open up today, as I always do, on Sunday mornings with prayer requests. I have a few of them and concerns. I wanted to mention prayers uh, and thoughts for people who have been forced to travel for various reasons during this time. Uh, I, a few of these stories have come to my attention, um, not only uh, inside the church, you know, a few relatives away uh, related to us, but outside the church. Uh, people have some things going on, some health reasons. Sometimes they absolutely have to travel during this quarantine time, so prayers for comfort and safety. Also, continue prayers for all the essential workers out there, health care workers, nurses, even people in grocery stores, praying for protection and courage and letting you folks know that we are thinking about you and we understand um, the, the gravity and the importance of what it is that you're doing. I also wanted to mention we have upper room books inside the church, right inside the door at the Drakesville Church, and there were about 15 of them left uh, as of the other day. So if you don't have a key, but you'd like one, Mary Stalker would like you to contact her, and she will help you uh, or meet you at the church so you can get one of those books. So thank you, Mary, for that. So the title of our sermon today is called Defending the Faith. Defending the Faith. And where I want to start is the fact that we recently received notification from school administrators that were canceling classes for the entire remainder of the spring term. This is now old news by about a week. Based on the governor's order, this makes sense, of course, given all that's going on with the global pandemic. But it also means that there may not be spring sports at all now, unless they get pushed back to summer. And it reminds me of how much I used to enjoy attending some of my own children's sporting events. We used to take it for granted. My middle child, Gavin, for example, used to love to play soccer, and it was a joy coming with him and cheering him on at his games. Typically, he plays defense, so he's normally in the back quarter of the field, making sure that no one from the other team can charge through the defensive line and score. But one Saturday in May, a few years back, my little guy got to put on the goalie gear and defend the goal. Now I saw nothing but joy beaming from his little face as he took his position in front of the net. It was time to get down to business. You could actually see it in his eyes. And so I struggled to catch my breath from the sidelines. It was so exciting. I was hoping and waiting for him to steal the show. It was just as emotional watching him swing away from the batter's box during a Little League game as it was to guard the goal in a soccer game. Now the first soccer match was a huge success. He was able to stop almost every drive to the goal. The second game, however, was much more difficult. We were outnumbered and outgunned. I was equally proud of him during both games, of course. Regardless of the final score, both he and his team were winners in my book. And afterward, it was time to take off the goalie gloves and jump into the car and head home for the ride home. Only a quick stop at the gas station for Gatorade and a snack, and we were on our way. Now, there is much at stake, folks, for a goalie in a soccer match. It's often said that they can help make or break the outcome of the game. Surely the entire team helps, but there is something to be said for tending the goal itself. It's the same for you and I when it comes to talking about spiritual matters. All of us, I believe, are called in some way to help defend the gospel message that was handed down to us throughout the generations. It's a message that spans from the first apostles all the way up to the current church. We are all only ever one generation away from losing this life-changing truth if we fail to pass it forward to our children. And I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that it's a good idea to use the same type of goalie zeal to defend what the Bible has to say. It's so important to defend the faith. Think about the current situation that we are in. For some, this pandemic trial is a purification of their faith. It's a way to cling tighter and closer to Jesus. 
But for others, they may very well ask, where is God now? Why is he allowing all of this sickness to happen in our world? What an incredible opportunity for ministry, folks. God may very well use this time to help draw people closer to himself. People who weren't necessarily taking the time to listen to scripture or read the Bible two months ago are now listening. And we are in a position to help defend the gospel message and evangelize to others. We can offer the hope of Christ to people in this dark time. Listen to what Philippians 1 verse 3 to 7 says. I thank God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. You will note that this letter to the church in Philippi assures us of one very important thing. It reminds us that God will not only affirm us and help us to stand strong while defending the goal, but he will also complete the work that he has started. Take a moment to consider the weight of this promise, friends. It is God himself who will help us along this faith journey. God himself who will stand for truth when others don't. God himself who has asked us to help defend the gospel message and tend the goal. Sometimes, however, we allow a goal. The other team gets through our defenses and manages to score. So I asked my son about that one day, what he thought of some of those large players from the other team running straight at him and kicking the ball as hard as they could. Was he scared the whole time, I wondered to myself? Because I certainly would have been, and I'm a grown-up. That age group has quite a variety of size differences, by the way. Some kids are very short, others are as tall as me. It brings the image of David and Goliath to mind, honestly. The large, overpowering, and intimidating giant versus the smaller, soon-to-be king of Israel. Remember that Goliath was just one soldier in an entire army of Philistines, a force that was to be reckoned with during David's day. But remember, David had been tending his father's flock of sheep for years. He had developed some skills when it came to warding off attacks from predators. God had been grooming him for this day all along. Likewise, when I asked Gavin if he was afraid of the larger, taller players, he told me it didn't matter, and that's just how the game is played. Wise advice from a young boy. So what does it mean for you and I to give up the occasional goal? I believe it means that once in a while, despite our best efforts, we will fail to defend and uphold the truth of the gospel. It'll happen. From time to time, probably more often than we would like to admit, people looking at us from outside will not always see the sacrifice, death, and resurrection of Jesus reflected in the things we do and say. Instead, they may see something a touch more realistic. Maybe they see us arguing with our spouse or kids, or cussing out that person in front of us in traffic. Or maybe we are just as worried as the rest of the world about this strange new virus. And that's okay also, by the way. Just because we keep the faith doesn't mean we don't worry at times. It's just that we are called not to walk in fear all the time. Now, some of you might know a gentleman named Nicky Gumbel. Nicky Gumbel was the creator and the originator of the Alpha series. And what the Alpha series is, is a set of classes that help people find and get in touch with and experience the Christian God. These have become very popular over the last decade. And Nicky Gumbel tells a story where he was out riding his bike on the streets of London, because he's from London, and he would do this quite often to get exercise. Some of us know what he means right now during this uh, time of 
quarantine and isolation, we really, really look forward to getting outside and exercising. He was riding his bike. The streets of London, he says, are often uh, small and tight and cramped a little bit. So he was dealing with a car that wouldn't pass him when he wanted to. And so Nicky Gumbel says to himself, I'm going to give this driver a piece of my mind once he does get up to the stoplight. So the car comes to the stoplight, rolls to a stop. Nicky, on his bicycle, comes up next to him and cusses him out a little bit. The man driving the car rolls the window down and says, You look a lot like Nicky Gumbel, who leads my alpha class at church. Nicky says his entire facial expression changed, and he began to have a good conversation about faith with this person that he just cussed out in the vehicle. There are days when we let sin win. There will be times when the love of Christ maybe doesn't quite materialize in our daily walk. Maybe we are tired, we are emotional, we are grouchy. And when we miss the mark, when we sin and fall short of the glory of God, it is important to pick ourselves back up and keep going. Someone I respect once said, it is okay to fail as long as you fail forward. Well, my son did similar things that day at the soccer game, I think. He did not fail, but if he missed a block while tending the goal, he did not give up and walk off the field. There was no time for that. There was no throwing down the tennis racket like John McEnroe used to do during his tennis games years ago. After all, the next play was already in motion. It was time for Gavin to keep his eye on the ball again. There was a job to do. There were Philistines yet to defeat. And so it would be wise for you and I to do the same thing. We fall sometimes, but that doesn't mean God stops edifying us. There cannot be any walking off the field. We ought not give up. If you fail, fail forward. Learn from it. Get back up. Ask God for forgiveness. And please remember to forgive yourself at some point along the way as well. If you don't, then everyone around you will suffer right alongside. Do not let your ego and pride convince you that for some reason you have a special dispensation to hang on to unforgiveness. If God can forgive you, then you can forgive yourself and other people. There will be times when we don't have the courage to evangelize someone who may need the gospel message, times when we might be too embarrassed or too anxious to own up to our Savior publicly, times when we may act more like Peter who denied Christ three times when questioned, Peter kept saying, I don't know this man. We must forgive ourselves for moments like these, just like Jesus forgave Peter and resolved to continue being a disciple of Christ. And there is one more point that I feel deserves some attention. There's an idea out there that it's only the pastor's job to evangelize and that we should send all spiritual seekers to him or her whenever necessary. Now, this is acceptable, of course, and I love talking to people about faith, but I want to stress the fact that sometimes people come to you with questions for a reason, and not the pastor. For whatever reason God has sent them to you, they may not even want to talk to me. If this happens, accept it. It is your turn to defend the goal. Don't try to be clever or fancy. Just tell the story about how God changed your life. Trust me, this will typically be enough to make an impact. In your own words and in your own way, you get to testify to another person about the power of God's grace and goodness. For this brief period of time, you are the walking and talking incarnation of the Bible for that individual. Don't forego that opportunity by ushering them off to talk to someone else, or maybe just giving them a book to read that might answer their questions later. Those are okay things to do, but they want to hear about the faith from you. Now, I believe this is backed by Scripture. 1 Peter 3, verse 15 says, But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. 
but do this with gentleness and respect. Everyone will be called upon to defend the goal from time to time, even if we are not professional goalies. Protecting, preserving, and communicating God's love through the sacrifice of His Son is a great honor, and the world needs to hear it now more than ever. How much of this joyful message do you think the average person sees when they turn on the nightly news right now? Not much, I think. Instead, they see images of sick people, politicians arguing, and mass graves in New York City. The gospel message is something that doesn't grow old, folks. It doesn't become antiquated. It has changed my own life, and it can change yours as well. With churches everywhere unable to convene physically in person, these times of fellowship and conversation become that much more important. And we take special care to keep in mind the last part of First Peter, which says, But do this with gentleness and respect. Have you ever been evangelized by force? Or had the situation arise where people tried to argue you into faith? instead of simply listening. The Bible says that it is by love and kindness I have drawn thee. Love and kindness. Not judgmentalism, not self-righteousness, and not guilt. We ought to love others the way Jesus did, and if we do so, we will be such a remarkable church and community that people will flock from miles around. We will stand out in a crowd. So when my son and I finally pulled into the driveway at the end of that soccer game years ago, we were both tired, but my heart leapt with joy out of my chest watching him tend the goal out on the soccer field. And I have a feeling that God's heart is no less joyful when he watches you and I defend his message. I always try to keep a spare set of shin guards and goalie gloves in the trunk of my car just in case the situation arises where I need to use them. I hope you do as well. Will you pray with me now? Lord, we pray for the courage and ability to defend the faith. We pray that we might do so with gentleness and respect. And we pray that you give us the right words to say and the right timing. As always, in Jesus' name,